file in get yourself comfortable welcome back thank you for joining me we're going to look at a combination probot <laughs> probot pirate robot that was my contraction for it is it really a robot no it's technically not a robot but that's what i call it anyway before we get rolling grab your drink today i'm slurping down a grossly unhealthy sugary fruit punch from Mick Cafe that's been sitting in my fridge for a few days. The reason it's been there is I only take a few sips and that's all I will poison my body with. Then it goes back for another, you know, stay in the fridge and then a week later I might take another few sips. It was just something I had handy and I'm like, okay, I'm going to grab it. Oh man, it burns my throat. Too sweet. I need to dilute it. Anyway, if you're comfortable with your coffee, Maybe it's morning and you just stirred it and clanked it and sweetened it and creamed it up, lightened it, added a dollop of sugar, a half a teaspoon of cream maybe, who knows? And you grab the snack and you're focused now and you're looking at this and wondering, when is he just gonna shut up and talk about the toy? I'm here to tell you that time is right now because what I have here is the Mechanical Pirate by Wyone or Yone. Is that short for Yonazawa? Probably not. Maybe it is. I don't know that either. But anyway, I got this because I said, you know what? I have pirate toys in the monster case, which you've seen by now. And I, you know, I never really actually thought of getting this because this is another, another segment. And I'm going to show you this real quick before I go on. They did make this body pressing. So let me move this out of the way. And maybe I did a cool pirate introduction. But so you can see here, this body style was used on the Mego Man, and there's several versions of the Mego Man robot here. That's why I said it's kind of a combination, because I think the pressing is most commonly associated with the robot version. They had a plain version, well, plain, then they had this one that had gears lithographed onto the ears. Uh, let me go back. I don't even know how to go back on this thing. Um, then they made. The Peace Corps man, can we expand that? Yeah, you see that, the Peace Corps man. Then they made a chef. And I think there's a bunch of other of these types of wind-up mechanical men. Two of them, which are at least a robot. And then Hank Gosies, the deceased artist, a uh, friend of mine, and uh, also huge robot collector, he made this clever box. And he called it the Ego Man. Now, was it Ego Man, the Italian version, maybe? Because this, this looks like a real box. This says for Italy. Oops. Oh, that's Safari. I'm used to, uh, I'm used to um, Google. But this is my son's pad, and he doesn't have um, Google on here. He's like, you're Safari. I'm like, all right, whatever. Anyway, so the point is that there's a lot of versions of this cat. Now, am I ever going to get the chef? The, I don't know, the Indian, the cowboy. I don't know how many they have. Mm, probably not. But I do like the pirate because I have, like I said, pirate toys. And it's all tin. Let's start with the box. You know, what I notice about the box, okay, he's a peg leg. And why is he a peg leg? Is he probably lost a battle? And why would he lose a battle? He looks sort of formidable, right? Brandishing that... Uh, cutlass, right? Is that what they call the pirate sword, the cutlass? Well, look at the way he's holding this flintlock. So if I had a guess, he probably shot himself in the foot, and that's why now he's a peg leg, because most people I know, in the heat of battle, don't grab the flintlock like that. Now, the only explanation would be if he disarmed a foe, maybe, and as he pulled it away, he's ready to decapitate the guy, and maybe this is the enemy's flintlock pistol. That's a possibility. Although, I don't know. He he doesn't look that clever, but maybe he is. We don't want to we don't want to underestimate our pirate uh pirate toys here. But it's a cool depiction. He's got these, well, 
the skull without the crossbones. He's got that cool pirate hat. And this was before the Disney's Pirate of the Caribbeans and all that stuff. So, although maybe they had the ride, you know, how long have they had that ride for? Uh, maybe they were more influenced by Errol Flynn, you know. What was Errol Flynn's pirate movie? I know he had a couple of popular ones. And here is the Black Pearl type pirate ship, I guess. You can see here, and he's a mechanical pirate. The side is pretty plain, but I, I gotta say, like, this cover is very uh, illustrative. I like it. I mean, it's a lot going on there. You got the nice pirate ship, the seas, another ship in the background, nice fonts. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. And of course, he's depicted like a comic booky, very like, a, like on a cover of a comic book, he would fit right in. In other words, they didn't skimp out on the uh, art style, even a lot of details, wood planks, ropes. You know, so he's pretty cool. Now, as for the toy itself, like I said, if you're a completionist and you want all the toys in this series, like the robots and the chef and whatever else they made, then this is one to get. So this came up. I I don't even know if I have the uh, the Mego, man. I've had them a bazillion times. I've had the uh, gear-eared version. If then I get rid of them, then I get them again. I don't know why. Um, sometimes I'm into them, sometimes I'm not. But, you know, I'm more into this guy now. Look, he has the beautiful skull and crossbones on the hat. Look at his mug. And, you know, what's funny is the nose is actually used on the robot, too. So they use that same round no nose on all the toys, which you would think for the robot they could have used maybe um, – a triangular nose would have been a little bit nicer, but for whatever reason, they didn't. But I love the colors on this guy. It looks very cool. Nice uh, clothes. You know, he's got a lot of details on here. Buttons, vests. Look at the, the gold lapels on there. I mean, they, they went all out designing this guy. He's got nice, straight, white teeth for a pirate, with the exception of the way the tin lines up. He's pretty cool. He reminds me of uh, a little bit of the Yosemite Sam grin. Got the eye patch going. He's very color coordinated with his blue pants to match his blue hat. That's pretty cool. Here's your logo in the back, the Y.O. made in Japan. And uh, they have a bell for effect. And he kind of shuttles along. Got his boots. That's pretty cool. You know, so let's wind him up. There's not a lot else to say about this. Hopefully he works. <laughs> I say he's working. That is pretty cool. It works really well. Wow, that's cool action. So he comes forward, he spins around. Let me do that one more time. Oh, man. I bet this. I bet his booty. Not bad. Let's see here. Oh, okay. I had pulled on that boot a little bit. But thank God he went right back. Anyway, that was nice. He had good duration, good action too. Kind of the way he spun around and did everything. So that is your Mechanical Pirate by Wyon. You know, like having him here in my hand and playing with it the way I just did does kind of make me want to get the other ones in the series, quite honestly, you know, because they're all kind of cool. I like the different characters that they made. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think of this swashbuckling character. If you like it, thumb up the video, because as always, I appreciate your time. And anything you do to help the algorithms is also appreciated. So with that, by the way, if you're a lurker, please subscribe. And uh, thanks again. And I'll talk to you later. Yarr.